got was on the line. <laughs> Please get your life together. My goodness. Okay. Let's see if people join. Okay. Because I have something so... I feel like I got to get this off my chest, okay? Because I cannot be on live long tonight because I got an ish to do. But, like, I feel like we have to talk about this. And I don't know if people are ready, but we got to start being honest. So, you guys saw that critics, um, they, they... Hey, Tattoo Cosmic. I know it's been a while. I'm trying to do better by y'all. I'm trying to do right by y'all, okay? Thank you for the super chat. Um, I know y'all saw that a certain group of people saw this movie yesterday that I'm not going to name. And it was all these reviews, right? These reactions. Because Embargo hasn't lifted and doesn't lift until, I think, on... Um... Valentine's Day. So, but it's not about that, right? <clears throat> it's about just the state of film criticism right now. And I feel like we need to, we have to start being critical on movies, okay? I get it. We were in a pandemic for a couple of years. Now we act like nothing ever happened. We were in a pandemic we didn't get to have a lot of content, especially content that we can consume um, with the theatrical experience. I get it. Like, I was sad. You were sad, okay? But, like, we're done with that now. And I feel like we really let a lot of things um, slide for quite some time. And I myself is, like, very, very guilty of this. Um, and... I just feel as though, is this even making sense? Um, I'm trying to like talk in circles, but I think we have to get to the point. Hey, Steven, I'm doing okay. Today was a very busy day, but I'm doing okay. Um, I think we have to get to a point where we actually start having honest conversations about films and honest conversations about how a lot of these studios right now um are making movies that aren't of the high quality that they used to be. And I think that, especially if you use an example like Marvel, okay? Um, so everyone saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, whatever the movie is called. And I think that, um, and I, I, this is not my review of the movie, my social reaction of the movie would be, it's okay. It's cute, okay? But what I want to talk about Marvel as a whole. And it's stuff that I've said before, you know, where I feel as though because we went all those years in the pandemic without actually being able to consume content that we were so starved for content that we let a lot of things slide. And I think that we have to actually start being critical of movies. And I think in general, we are really praising mediocrity at this point. And I think that for me, I would rather have less movies that are actually really, really spectacular instead of getting multiple like, okay, this is cool. It's cute. It's cool instead of having like multiple just middle of the road types of films. And I think that as critics, we have to start being more honest about movies. I think right now, and this is my personal opinion, I think right now we are too concerned with being invited to the next screening or getting the next interview or getting the next premiere invite that we're too scared to actually critique something because we're going to lose out on some type of access. And we have to stop that. 
Because at the end of the day, the only people that you're doing a disservice to is yourself in general and your audiences, right? Like, we critique stuff to help people be better, right? Like, that's the whole point of getting criticism. Y'all criticize me all the time. Now, sometimes I don't take it well. I'm working on it. But you guys criticize me, and that helps make me be better, okay? So... I just don't know how we lost that, but I'm starting to feel like we're almost at the point of no return of people sacrificing criticism for access. And I think we have to stop doing that because it's, it's becoming blatantly obvious. Now, there's going to be movies that people disagree about. There's stuff that I like that you guys don't like. There's stuff that y'all like that I don't like, and that's fine. But I'm scared because if we don't if we don't start being honest about films, if we don't start honestly critiquing films, I think that we have we're going to be we're going to be in a dangerous like territory that I think we're very close to where we're continuously getting movies that are being praised that aren't really that good. So I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know if people have to just say, I have to sacrifice. Because it's not fair to your audience, right? Like, you guys follow me because you want me to be honest about these movies. That's the whole That's the whole point of pay your weight. Because everybody, like, I don't know about y'all, but I got bills that's due the same day every single month. So I don't need to spend my money to go to theaters to watch every little thing. like. I don't understand that. You know what I mean? So I just, it's sad that we're here because I was just talking to my friends. Like we were, I was talking about how like movies back in like the nineties or the, the early two thousands, they used to be so good. Like just a good story, good plot twist, good character development. And honestly, I've stopped going to some of my screenings because I'm just like, it's not even worth my time. Like the past couple of movies, and I, I'm gonna get you guys reviews. Like Knocking at the Cabin is a very great example of how I question myself as a critic because everybody was talking about how good this movie was. And when I watched it, I was just like, I would never recommend this to somebody. And I think, and, and just because I'm saying wait to something doesn't mean that the movie is bad. But I know I've seen better M. Night Shyamalan movies, okay? People are saying it's the best work since Signs. Be, be for real. Since Signs? You're going to tell me that this movie is on the same level of quality as Signs. As Signs. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Be for real. Be for real. And I'm not even a huge critic of M. Night Shyamalan. I actually enjoy most of the stuff that people don't like, okay? So I think that it also sets the audience up with an unrealistic expectation. And that's the point. Hey, Nita, that's the point of why I have a payer weight because it's not due. Because I think sometimes critics forget, like, we're watching this for free, right? And it's a privilege to be able to go and screen these movies before they come out. But when I'm watching something, I have to watch something like, if I was spending my hard-earned money, and would I tell someone to, to spend gas money and to spend money on a ticket, especially if they got multiple tickets to buy, to go watch a movie? And I think people have to have discernment on whether or not movies are enjoyable for a general audience or if they're enjoyable for cinephiles because those are two those are two totally different things and I think right now we're not basing our criticism for our, our audience and we're doing our audience a disservice when we do this review that's why sometimes I think I tell y'all like sometimes I'm just like hey I like it 
but I don't think regular people gonna like it. Like when we talk about everything everywhere all at once, I love the themes in it. Yeah, I know I think extra deep about stuff, but I don't think it's a movie that general audiences are gonna automatically enjoy. It just depends. Okay. Uh, thank you for a super chat, Steven. People act like you have to be a hundred percent love or hate a film with no middle ground, and you can be critical of aspects of a film and still enjoy parts of it. This I remember. When I was talking to my friend about Avatar Way of the Water, and I said, ah, the movie just looks fantastic. Like, the visual effects is so great, but I still have an issue when it comes to appropriation, whether they're blue people or not. We talked about this. We're not going to go back into it, but I still have a couple of issues, and I feel like it's the same story just repeating itself from the first one. So you don't like the film? No. I said I like the film, but I can still be critical of something that I like. And I don't think that people, it's like people get offended if you have an opinion or you have a criticism of something that you did not like in the movie. And I don't know how we got to the point where we can't just agree to disagree or sometimes people have points that I don't agree with, but how they're able to articulate it and they support it with evidence that I'm just like, you know what? Okay, I can see that. I mean, I don't agree with you, but I see where you're coming from. I like how you argued your point. It's okay for us to disagree. We don't have to agree on stuff. Like, I just, I don't, I just don't get it. Okay? Um, Gigi says, Sharana, it starts with the scripts. Yeah. Who reads it? Who proofreads it? And who's in the room? Yes. Um, I definitely agree with that. Most of this is a script or script issues. Typically, there's not enough character development or the people that you're focusing on or the people that we really don't care or connect with. Or you think that you're building this, you're building this big connection, but that's not resonating to what I'm actually seeing on the screen. And so I think the reason, this is just my opinion. I'm sure people are going to disagree with it and it's fine. I think that critics are afraid. I'm just going to keep it a buck. Critics are afraid to actually be critical in fear that they will lose access to films. And let me delve into that a little bit deeper. So there's different stages to this, okay? So let's say if I'm just a film critic who inter who reviews movies. I can say whatever the hell I want to say, okay? I go to my screener, I watch the movie because that's what I'm supposed to do. And I say it's a wait, it's a pay, I go on about my day, Okay? But when you are trying to interview talent and you're trying to build relationships with studios, you're trying to do more things, it gets a little murky. And I don't think it's something that the studios are like saying, Sharonda, if you don't give this a good review, I'm never inviting you to, I'm never inviting you to this again. That's not how it works. What I think it is, is that is like honestly, I'll give you case in point. If you guys have noticed, I mean, now I'm in a slump with actually giving y'all reviews in general. For some things, I don't do reviews for if I did interviews for. And it's a personal choice for me. Not any studio told me to say that. But sometimes I feel weird talking to talent and having this great conversation, but I didn't like what they did. I feel like it's kind of disingenuous for me to have this conversation because you notice when I do review interviews, I always say like, this is something that I did like about your character. I did like about the film or the series. I think it's very disingenuous for me to have a conversation like that and then to go trash your project, right? Um, That's just a personal thing that I just feel weird about doing because, like, what if you have to interview them again? What if this is the random time they actually watch your review? I just think it's it's it just gets weird to me, right? But there's also been times where I didn't like something and I wasn't invited to do an interview because. I gave my real opinion on why I didn't like something, which makes sense because it's kind of like, well, why would you want to talk? Why would you want to interview somebody for something that you didn't like anyway? It is weird, but also, too, I can still have a meaningful conversation just because I didn't like the show or the movie doesn't mean that it was because of that person that I'm talking to, right? 
Um, so I'm just trying to give you like nuanced opinions of how things can get murky. But this is something that I want to address head on. And it's not only in reference to quantum mania. It's in general what I see. When people are invited to premieres, it just gets weird, the reactions, okay? And especially if it's something that I've actually seen, to see what people say, it's giving, I want to be invited back again. So I'm just going to lie. Or I'm going to just say something positive, but that's not six months down the line. I'm going to say, I'm going to say how I truly felt about it later, right? And hey, I've had these things. I wasn't at a premiere, but you know, like how I said about Thor, like I saw Thor, I gave it a positive review. And then I was, after sitting on it a little bit longer, I was like, mm, now that I think about it, I actually didn't like that movie. And I regret saying that it was a pay when, after thinking about it, and sometimes it's just when I'm having conversations with people, you know, I'm just like, actually, I don't like that. I didn't like that. So there's moments that that happens, okay? <clears throat> but I see these people who post these glowing, like, reactions, and I'm just like, okay, so that's going to get you invited to the next, next premiere, but what does it do for your audience? And I guess for you guys, like, because you follow, like, I ain't nobody. I ain't nobody famous. How does that make y'all feel? Because you guys follow people for their opinions to tell you how they feel about things. So how does that make y'all feel when you have people that you follow and they say something that's so amazing, it's so great, it's the best movie of the year, best movie in the franchise, all the same stuff that you hear every time there is some type of premiere. How do, do you guys feel betrayed? Like, I mean... Like, you know what I mean? Like, what? how does that make y'all feel? Because I feel like I would be doing y'all a disservice to lie. So sometimes I just be quiet. I just be like, I'm going to wait till my review come out and then I'll say how I feel and y'all can take it or leave it. It's, it's whatever, okay? It's whatever. But I just think it's weird. And I think that's when we get into the whole thing. And that's why I always tell people when they're like, I want to start a YouTube channel or I want to do movie reviews. I always say the most important thing is to be authentically you. Like, you have to be honest. And just because you don't like something, you don't have to trash something. And I think that's something that even I fell victim to. Because when you trash things, you get more views. People love negativity. Those videos do so much better. Anytime I do a thumbnail and I'm like this, it's going to get views, okay? But I feel like you can you cannot like something respectfully. Um, But I just, I feel like it's getting to the point where we're actually hurting general audiences by not telling the truth. And we're hurting directors. We're hurting directors. We're hurting, like, screenwriters. We're hurting talent. Like, no one can get better until they get the truth. Nobody's going to get better until you tell the truth. So, I just think that, I don't know, it kind of made me sad, man. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, between the past two weeks of seeing people's premiere reactions and, like, these past couple of weeks, because like these aren't the only movies. It's just kind of like, what are y'all doing it for? Like, is it really worth it? And let me just be clear and say this again, because people take stuff out of context. I don't think it's the studio. Like the studios don't say like, I'm not going to invite you if you didn't like a movie, right? That's not what's happening. So I don't know why people have this whole fear or thought process in their mind that they're going to lose access just because they were honest about a movie. Because I just like stuff all the time. I still get my invites to do interviews or do this and that. So I don't know why people feel like they have to do that. You don't have to be disrespectful. Now, if you're disrespectful about it, you're probably not going to get an invite. But if you're just giving your critical opinion because that's why you're being invited because you're someone who holds influence in this industry. That's the whole point. 
So, so yeah, like it's just really, it's really crazy to me. And I just wanted, I just, I had to get that off my chest. Okay. Cause I had to get it off my chest. Cause I feel like people saying one thing on social and behind closed doors, we're saying something totally different. And if you feel a certain type of way about it and you're watching it, then it's probably about you. And you should probably look within and figure out why. This ain't nobody, like, and I just want to be clear. This is no one. This is just something in general I see, okay? I just read reactions. I don't pay attention to no names. I just read reactions. And I just be like, y'all lying. Why y'all lying? Literally, this is me scrolling. Why y'all, why you lying? Why are you lying? You know you lying. So yes. Um Y'all going to talk about M Man tomorrow. I'm gonna watch the subpar magic mic. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna be able to make my magic mic screening. Have I seen M Man 3? Yes, I saw I saw M Man 3. It's okay. That's my social media reaction. It's cute. I'm not talking about any specific critic. A lot of people do this. I just be reading the comments and I be like, y'all lying. So, yeah. Is Jonathan Major sexy? When is my baby not sexy? <laughs> I can't answer any questions because I can't. Trust me, I will give y'all all the tea once I do my review. I will do a review for this, I promise. Um. Okay, now Athena, you know Top Gun Maverick was my favorite movie of 2022. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's talk about Grammys and then I got to watch Outer Banks because I got to interview the cast tomorrow. I have not watched like not even one episode of the new season. Um, so Beyonce losing album of the year. Okay. Um, hey, Supreme Coven. If y'all got questions for, for the OBX crew, let me know because baby needs some help. Okay. I did interview the UCAS today. And Tati Gabrielle, she's just my favorite. I love talking to her. Um, okay. So about the Grammys. And this is honestly, this is just honestly how I feel in general. I think that black entertainers need to stop seeking white validation. And this goes for like the Oscars and everything. This goes for the Grammys. We just have to stop seeking white validation. Okay. And I think that after this, Beyonce should never attend another Grammy ceremony. Ever. If I was Beyonce, I would never show up ever again. Because look at how many times they mention Beyonce's name. When Trevor's like, Beyonce's here tonight. Where's Beyonce? Beyonce's Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. Is it the Grammys or is it the Beyonce's? Like, which one is it? Is it the Grammys or is it the Beyonce's? Because I'm confused. Are y'all confused? Because I'm confused. Which one is it? Sorry, I just booked all these flights and I'm making sure this stuff went out right. Y'all literally use Beyonce's name to market this show to get people to watch it, Okay. To get people to watch this show, you use her name, but you still refuse to give her album of the year. This woman has won the most Grammys of any other entertainer, but she's never won song of the year or she's never won album of the year. And I think she might have won song of the year once. I'm not quite sure. It's it's ridiculous. And I hey, it might be some Harry fans in here. I'm a Harry fan. I didn't think his I didn't think this album was that good. I still prefer Harry's first album over this album. That's just me being honest about that. I I think that 
Harry's album is is only one, maybe two songs that I listen to. I feel like his first album is better. This just wasn't giving like the first one. I think Music for a Sushi Restaurant is the best one. Like as it was is is by second. But those are the only two songs that I would even listen to on the al album. So if anyone should have beat Beyonce, it would have been Bad Bunny. Okay, now if Bad Bunny would have won, I'd have been like, it's still some BS, but at least Bad Bunny won. Because that's the only other person that I would have been like, would have have had a chance. Okay, that's it. So, it just, even he was shocked. Like, even he was like, and then when he said, this just don't happen for people like me. You said that during Harriet's Hellman month. You was you was for real. So if I was Beyonce, if Beyonce was my friend in real life, not just in my head, like I think she is, I would say, sis, F the Grammys. And F also too. This this is what I this is why I have to say black entertainers stop subscribing for white validation because it's your little rich white friends who be kikiing with you who vote for these awards they kiki with you to your face and they still don't vote for you y'all watch the y'all watch all of the these these white women campaign for somebody who probably the regular general audience ain't never heard of a day in their life. Now, I'm not taking away from her because y'all should, like, I heard Two Leslie is actually a really fantastic performance. But you literally had Oscar winners, Oscar-nominated actors, well-respected people in the industry do a whole entire Oscar campaign and got this woman a nomination. And I'm sure these are people that probably, they... They probably have been to Viola's house. Probably went on vacation together. Okay? Probably have worked together, had dinner with one another, know each other's families. Like, and these are the same people who would not campaign for you. I didn't see none of them saying Viola Davis gave one of the best performances of the year. Danielle Deadwaller gave one of the best performances of the year. I didn't see none of these people saying Beyonce had one of the best albums of the year. I didn't see none of that. I didn't see none of that. Which y'all have to remember the same people who are being nominated are the same people who vote. It's the same people who vote. The Academy ain't investigating nothing. They say that they're investigating it. They're just saying that to say that they did something. Nothing's going to come from this. And I don't think there's anything wrong with what they did. I just think that you need to look at what your, your fellow actresses did. And know that they didn't do nothing for you. And you need to move accordingly. Okay? I think that people hate on Beyonce because Beyonce has, like, this huge fan base that people feel like it's too much. She's too popular. She's too famous. She's too big. Like, they're sick of her. They're sick of her. Okay? Literally, literally sick of her. I'm sorry. That's the devil trying to stop me from speaking the truth, okay? I think that people are so jealous of Beyonce and just sick of her being famous that they would vote for other people just so she can't get even bigger than what she is now. And because of that, I really, really think that Beyonce has to make the decision and say, I am not going to validate this racist system any longer and I will never be showing up to another Grammys again even if I was able to win album of the year I ain't gonna be there because I'm sick of your shit and I think Viola needs to do the same thing I think she I we gotta stop doing this Oscar so white the Grammys is racist but y'all still show up. Y'all still be there. 
Y'all don't go to the black stuff. I rarely see people at the NAACP Image Awards or seeing people at the, the what is the other black, BET Awards. But y'all go to these, these white ran ceremonies that do not care about you, will use your likeness to get views, but never give you the credit that you deserve. It's terrible. Like, it's terrible. But you can't, you can't snub the people who actually support you every single year. If you think about it, the BET Awards was the first place that Beyonce performed as a solo artist when she did Crazy in Love. But nothing's going to get better if you keep letting them use you. That was the whole thing about the Hollywood, the Golden Globes. People were so mad. And I was like, now, what y'all mad for? Anyone knew that it ain't been no black people in the Golden Globes this whole time. So I was just kind of confused. Like, so did y'all really just not know? Or because we were putting black boxes on everybody's profile. Like, that's why we outraged about this. Because... I talk about gatekeeping, lack of access, segregation, discrimination as a film critic every day. You guys are literally saying that you hate this institution because they don't have black critics, but you let your white publicists deny black press from talking to you every single film or TV show that you have coming out. And that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. So I just really want people to stop subscribing. If you feel like the system is racist, if you feel like the system is not built for you to win, then stop supporting the system that continues to not honor your worth. That's just really what it is. Is what happened to Beyonce terrible? It is. But after a certain point in time, we got to start blaming Beyonce. Cause she's letting them do this to her. Now I get why she came today. Cause she was going to make history. So she, she made her history. That's fine. Going forward. Since you are already, you, you can't break no more records. You only added to having being the most decorated person. No more. I will be at home. If I win, someone will accept on my behalf. Cause I'm not giving you an ounce of screen time at all. Period. I'm not. This girl lost to Beck, Taylor Swift, Adele, and now Harry Styles. BF and for real. Not taking away from talent, but I'm saying during those years, it wasn't the best album. Of the, they didn't have the best albums of the year. So, um, That's my thought on it. I don't think Adele deserved the win over Lemonade. I just don't. That's just my thought, though. Let me look up. Was it 25 that she won for? 25 album. So, this. All I ask, hello. Those were the two main popular songs from the album. Lemonade song list. I mean, you had Don't Hurt Yourself, Sorry, Hold Up, Freedom, Formation, Daddy Lessons. And I'm not even doing all the songs. I'm just talking about the most popular songs. I just, I think that Lemonade was still better. Adele had like two main big hits off of 25. So I'm just like, I just, I'm I'm just being honest. Y'all know I ain't gonna lie. I I I keep it real if I feel like somebody should have won. But no, I don't think that 25 should have won over Lemonade. Um, no. So um that's just that's just my thoughts thoughts on it i just think that after a certain point in time we have to just we have to just start blaming ourselves like if 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 they're 
if if they're going to allow them to use their likeness to get views, to get ratings, to get clout, that's on you. I think they have to invalidate the Grammys. If black artists said we are no longer showing up to the Grammys, watch watch how their ratings tank. Watch how their ratings tank. If if these people say that they not these black entertainers, because let's be honest, it'd be the black entertainers who be who really be killing it. Because I mean, honestly, a lot of the performances that night, I was like, it's giving nothing. Um. Um, but yeah, we know that the Grammys aren't about numbers, so I'm just speaking off of the actual songs on the albums, you know what I mean? Like, so I just think that you just gotta stop, stop, I didn't have an issue with Lizzo, but most of the performances were like, I was still dancing to Bad Bunny's performance, but like, Bad Bunny was out of breath, and I said, baby, what you doing to be out of breath? So, yeah. Um, yeah, Harry couldn't even carry a note. I was like, baby, what's going on? Um... The Grammys is a dying... No, uh, big black entertainers devalue the BET Awards by not showing up. No, you're right. I'm like, y'all are mad that the Grammys won't celebrate you, but you have actual black award shows that celebrate us, and you don't even go to them. I didn't like Glorilla's performance. Glorilla didn't even say nothing. I was like, girl, are you a performer, or are you your own hype person? So, so yeah. So I'm just saying, that's that's just my thoughts on everything. I just had to get a couple things off my chest because I be feeling a certain type of way. And but think about it: if you had bigger, if y'all had bigger audiences, bigger entertainers that showed up to the BET Awards, they could secure more. They could secure more advertising dollars to make the show better like it's a win-win if beyonce showing up to the bet awards every week every year and she's no longer going to the grammys people will put money into the bet awards and then they can put on a better show if i was ben affleck i would look super annoyed too a little whack show buster was good so i'm just like that's that's what i'm saying like you can have a better award show if you have bigger talent show up. But I just think that these these black artists got to stop giving so much to people who care so little about them. Like, sorry, I need to hydrate. That's my issue. I just feel like they be doing stuff that they just, it's sad. It's just sad. It's just sad. They did cut the commercial in mine, but I was talking to my friend, so I made her show me um, her screen so I could see what was going on. Happy hour, uh, water. Look, my cabinets be open too, child. All of our shows are on their last leg.
What cocktail I'm making? I'm making a water cocktail. I'm on a diet, y'all. Trying to get skinny. Talking about what cocktail you making. A six-pack and a fat-ass cocktail, okay? Drinking this water. Thank you, Iman. What did y'all think of Sam Smith's performance? For free 99, you right. Cucumbers make me nauseous for some reason when I drink it in water. I like the song. I do feel like, I don't know. I do want, I feel like I have to do a video about Sam Smith as well because I feel like, I think the reason why so many people have a reason, a uh, issue with them right now is I feel like they're trying to be, it almost feels like they're trying to be so provocative. But the reason why everyone loves them is because they can actually sing. And I feel like because of how their new music is, I feel like it's kind of sacrificing the voice to sac. Hold on, let me get comfortable. It's sacrificing their voice to be provocative. And I I just, I don't know. And it has to be hard because maybe this is the type of music that they like making. And they didn't want to do the music they were making before. So I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I don't know. It's weird to me because I, I feel like if they're going to be provocative, I feel like you just need better, like, choreography and stuff, like, better production. I just think the production ain't there yet. Um, I do think, I do think that they're trying to find themselves still. And I think we just got to wait it out with them. I didn't watch the new video. I just think that it's just not hidden like it should be hidden. And I think that's the problem that I have right now. But I do like Unholy. I didn't even know that was their song at first. How about, I think that... I do feel like half of it is fat phobia as far as why they keep talking about their fashion sense. But I think Harry Styles is just as is just as tacky, personally. If we're gonna keep it a buck, like Harry Styles dresses tacky as well. I mean, are y'all not ready to hear that? Are y'all not ready to receive that? Cause I mean I could say that for a different day, but Harry Styles is has a very tacky sense of style as well. I just, I don't think that y'all are woke enough to realize that yet. Um, and I feel like a lot of people right now just pander. I think it's cool to, to, and that's what I hate about this. I feel like it's cool for a man to wear a dress. And I feel like some people are exploiting that to be popular and not because that's their actual style. And I do think a lot of people are queer baiting. And actually I'm not even, actually I'm not gonna say queer baiting because I feel like people should just wanna have to wear what they wanna wear. But I feel like for some people, they just do stuff cause it's hip right now. And that's the issue. Cause I don't wanna say that, I hate the whole, that it's a queer construct for men to wear dresses because I don't think it's that either. Men should wear what they want to wear. That don't make you any less of a man. That don't mean you can't blow some woman back out just because you got on a dress. Like, I just, no. I think that 
people are just doing stuff to be popular because that's the cool thing to do and not because that's what they actually do. And that's 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 my issue with it. So tacky is in right now, yes. Tacky is in. Only if you white, because black people black people not gonna let you let a black person get away with being tacky. So I'm just saying that's the problem that I have with it, is I feel like people are doing it to be cool and not because that's their actual fashion sense. And you can tell. Like, look at how Prince used to dress. And you'd be like, well, that's just Prince, baby, because he he was, baby, stay, stay with a woman, okay? Stay smashing. But that was just Prince's style. I just, uh, Prince was homophobic? Wow, that's so terrible. Did Prince wear dresses? I mean, Prince had his ass cheeks and stuff out. I mean, but the funny thing is back then, people didn't even care about that. If you think about it, men wore their hair long. They wore eyeliner, makeup. No one ever said anything about it, about it. So I don't understand why now it's such an issue of how men dress. I don't understand. Like, why do we do that? So I don't know. I think Sam Smith just got to find themselves because I don't think this is it either. But I do love that Sam feels comfortable to express themselves the way that they want to express themselves. And I think that living your truth and being happy to experiment in different things, I think that that's always fantastic. I just think the issue that people actually have is that... Um, the issue that they actually have is the fact that um, they just they they just not there yet. Can we get a close up of the nails? No, because I broke one of my nails. These are old. These are like five weeks old. And I need to get my nails redone, but my person is out tomorrow. So I got to glue my nail. I remember, I broke my pinky nail. So I got to find a way to glue my nail back on so I can moderate this panel. So pray for me, y'all. I'm going to have to put a clear, I'm going to have to buy a clear band aid and put it on here as well so I can maybe get away with it in that way but we're gonna have to make a way out of no way on, on thursday um uh, did i did you break it throwing a purse like me no what was i doing i was talking to y'all when i broke it i was doing something random do i go natural never what's that behind me a couch How was it? I like talking to everybody. I feel like I kind of messed up my questions for Penn. And it threw me off. But we made it through. He off on Wednesday. I was like, damn, you can't switch your days? Um, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do. And honestly, the girls aren't giving me any inspiration. Um... No, I was I was on live with y'all. I was in the back, but I was in my room when I broke it. About natural with the paint. Oh. <laughs> uh what you ain't this more natural? I thought this was like this was like my business professional set of nails.
Thank you, Shanika. Okay, I think they have an area opportunity for rock and heavy metal. Um, well, it's two parts this season. I can't talk about it yet, but I'll have a review for it. You. I really like talking to the cast of you people. What movie does everyone love that you hate? La La Land. I just was behind. I've been behind doing all types of... You want to know the real reason that I don't do reviews right now? is because I have a new camera and my old camera is broken. And I don't know how to work it. That's honestly why I haven't. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. I don't know how to work my camera. Yeah, just hit me up, Yutaka. I do not like La La Land. I think La La Land is such a mediocre film. Half of them can't even sing in a damn movie. And everybody's just like, this is the greatest thing ever. Only one of the songs actually is a bop. And that's the uh, the opening song. So I'm just like, once again, y'all be loving these mediocre films. When I say I want a musical, I want Moulin Rouge, okay? I want, they got multiple bops, okay? The Love Medley, the Tango Roxanne, okay? I still bop. Tango Roxanne, okay? I'll watch all the troll movies, the trolls movies over La La Land. Chicago, he had it coming. He had it coming. That is a musical, okay? That is a musical. And y'all sitting up here telling me La La Land. Yes, Brent, okay? That those are musicals. You tell me what bop, what bop is in La La Land? I just don't understand. I'm sorry. I'm still, still upset about this. Sorry. It's better than a, than a movie? Dream Girls, okay? I have not seen Atlanta season four. You know what it was? I hated the finale of season three, and it didn't make me excited to watch season four. But I heard that season four is actually really good. I was just quoting Dream Girls last night. I was like, what about what's best for me? And then you be like, we are a family, like a giant tree. Y'all can't quote no songs from La La Land like that. Y'all can't quote nothing from La La Land like that. What song y'all gonna sing? City of Stars. Like, what y'all singing from La La Land? What y'all seeing from La La Land? What people gonna know? Are they gonna even know that you singing something from La La Land? I'm just saying. The worst pies in London does go hard, though. So I'm just saying, he ran into my knife 10 times. Come on, y'all. I can quote all of Chicago, okay? Okay? Y'all could never do that for, you could never do that for La La Land. Never, never. He said, if you pop that gun one more time. Like, come on, y'all. Come be for real. Be for real.
I'm just saying, like, pop, squish, ah ah, Cicero, lip shits. Come on, y'all. What was, what was y'all favorite song from Chicago? Y'all sitting up here talking about damn La La Land. What's y'all favorite song from Chicago? I'm trying to think what's my favorite song. I think I like Roxy. I think that's my favorite song. I know the choreography and everything, y'all. Y'all don't want to see me on no Chicago, okay? Y'all don't want to see me. La La Land is about a, a group of people who can't sing and can't dance, and somehow they won all these Oscars for it. Okay, that's 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 what La La Land about. That's that's what it's about. Y'all like Cell Block Tango? Funny, honey. That sunny, funny, hubby. Wait, dummy, hubby. Come on, y'all. The oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, they both, oh, yes, they both, oh, yes, they both breach front. Y'all, come on. Uh, hairspray, run and tell that. I know where I've been. Y'all don't want to see me on no musicals, y'all. Y'all don't want to see me on no musicals. That's why when people be like, La La Land is so good, I just stare at them like, you're stupid, okay? That's how I feel. That's how I feel, okay? How about... <laughs> Sorry. If y'all like La La Land, I'ma let y'all have y'all. Okay. Do y'all. It ain't it ain't for me. It ain't for me. Go watch Chicago. Y'all should go watch Chicago. Okay. Go watch Chicago. Please go watch Chicago. I guess what what are y'all favorite uh musicals then? You like Grease? I learned how to play the Grease songs on piano. Hamilton. I still listen to Hamilton. You know the song that I actually like listening to right now is called Nonstop. Because I feel overworked and I feel like I'd be doing too much and I don't be having time to actually live or experience life. So I actually like, I have been listening to Hamilton a lot. Not Annie, the black one. Okay, yes. Who is she? She's Sandy. How I be doing too much, Naries? What I do? Hey, y'all remember um that Beyonce song? What what was that movie called? Carmen. She was like, the cars never lie. My last breath aside. And now I think about it. my time to die. I don't know what I was doing. Steady ways and time we were lit. Don't act like that song don't go, go hard. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to go. That song go hard, y'all. Stop playing. That song go hard. The song go hard. The movie's terrible, but that song go hard. That you gotta go, Danzilla. Now you know you're going to hell, Steve, for saying Cats is the best musical. That cars never lie. Y'all, I'm just saying. So, yeah. I do have 10 million jobs. You are absolutely right. I 
I like the songs of the greatest showman, but I still have issues with the greatest showman. <laughs> Thank you, Danny, for your backhanded compliment. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't. I can't. I'm trying to think of what other like musicals I used to always listen to when I was a kid. Let me see. Let me see. Best movie musicals. Let me see what we forgetting about. Of course, they got La La Land on here. Ugh. Ugh. I'm trying to see what else did I actually like. <sighs> now, y'all do be sleeping on the scene movies, but I don't necessarily in call that a musical. But y'all do be sleeping on the scene movies. I think we got all the big ones then. Oh, I forgot about Avita and then Sister Act. Do y'all remember that thing you do? Do y'all remember that thing you do? That I can't take you doing that thing. Everybody that's doing that thing. Y'all, that was my movie too. He was like, I quit. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I always wanted to quit like that. Be like, I quit. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, the Wiz. Blues Brothers. What was that? That that Nassau Funky. Funky Nassau Funky. Funky Nassau. That was good. I like the, uh, but they were still doing songs that were already made. Sister Act 2, you know, but I mean, they were still doing other songs. I'm trying to think people who had like original songs. What else? Let's see. What else we got, y'all? <gasps> Do y'all remember Cry Baby? Do y'all remember that? Please, Mr. Jailer, won't you let my man go free? Y'all, come on, y'all. Are you saying cry, baby? I'm so sorry. I miss that used to be my style. Oh, oh, and they was all rubbing up on the window. They be like, let him go, let him go. Is that really John Campion? Is it for real, John Campion? Y'all playing with me again? How y'all can't be if that's really you, though? We mess with the greatest showman, just not the revisionist history of the greatest showman. But greatest showman go hard, though. What's everybody's favorite greatest greatest showman song? You think it? <laughs> now he didn't see me singing all these crazy songs. I promise I'm not crazy, John. I'm, I promise I'm not crazy. <laughs> I pray that he didn't come in when I was singing the Crybaby song. From that, wait, what's that? What is that song? Because I can only think of the Todrick Hall portion of it, so I gotta rethink of all the other real versions of the song. Is that the rewrite the songs is the one with Zendaya and with what's that man's name, Zach Efron? If y'all don't listen to the Todrick for Todrick Hall version of The Greatest Showman, y'all missing out on life. Y'all missing out on life. You should really watch the Todrick. I know people hate Todrick Hall, but the greatest showman version of Todrick Hall is actually really, really good. I promise. It's good. But if y'all haven't seen Cry Baby, please go watch Cry Baby. Because it's actually, it's actually good. If y'all just just watch it. I know he canceled, but y'all should go watch Cry Baby. Because that's like an oldie but goodie. But yeah. I'm trying to think what are what else are some I like Blues Brothers 2000 actually more than the original Blues Brothers movie that came out. But Cinderella, Cinderella. Why y'all ain't say Cinderella? Cinderella is like 
Come on, y'all. Cinderella. What was the Cinderella song? You had Whitney. Impossible? You said Cinderella. Okay, I'm sorry, Purple. Cinderella was good. Brandy Cinderella. It's the only Cinderella that I recognize. Brandy and Whitney. I didn't know that I needed to make that distinction, but I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all did say Cinderella. I missed it. I'm sorry. I was probably going on by how much I hated La La Land for some reason. What about Dream? We said Dream Girls. Um, do y'all remember Anastasia? Journey to the Past, Aaliyah? We should probably do something like who had the best singles from actual movies. I didn't like Drew Barrymore's Cinderella movie. Okay. I am correct. I stand corrected, Stephen. There's two Cinderella movies that are the greatest Cinderella movies ever made. And that's Ever After with Drew Barrymore is one of the best Cinderella movies ever. And then The Black Cinderella, which is Cinderella with Brandy and Whitney. You are absolutely right. Jason, yes, Journey to the Past. Y'all, heart don't fail me now. Courage don't deserve. I got to go watch these musicals, okay? I know you're not going to say Bohemian Rhapsody on Al Gore's internet. Even though I did like Bohemian Rhapsody just for the replication of the performances. But I'm just saying. Once Upon a December is good, too. But can we consider, I guess, are, are we considered animated? Because then we got to go into, like, Lion King. Then we got to go into Little Mermaid. Like, I don't know. You should watch Chicago because it's good. Can I be honest? I'm not the hugest fan of Mamma Mia. I'm sorry. I know. It's just not for me. Sorry. It's just not. It's just not. I'm trying to think. Other music, they had Robin Hood Men in Tights listed. I mean, there are songs in that, but still, I can only think of the one song where men, we're men, manly men, we're men in tights, tights, tights. That's the only song that I remember from it. Nobody said Sister Act 2. I said Sister Act 2, but I said they technically don't count because they're singing like I'm talking. I guess my clarification would be movies with original. Songs that will be what I'm saying. I can't remember none of the songs from Idlewild, not Shark Tale for uh Black History Month. All I can think of was Shark Bait. Ooh, ha ha. You about to play Chicago? Did I know Evan Chandler who accused Michael Jackson was behind Robin Hood? What? Where can you watch Chicago? I don't know. The Wiz, Sparkle. See, if we get into Encanto, I guess I missed it when I said Anastasia because then we would have to talk about all the Disney movies. No, John was like super dope because John and came as surprise creators and I thought that that was so freaking cool. So I just always get scared because, you know, people be making like, they be making fake accounts. So I just be like, who be playing on my, who be playing on my live like this? Um, Chicago's on HBO Max. So if we said, what's the, does the bodyguard count as a musical? I still think The Bodyguard has the greatest movie soundtrack of all time, and I'll stand by that. I would say The Bodyguard, Soul Food, and Waiting to Excel have some of the most spectacular movie soundtracks, and then we would have to say Purple Rain and other things like that. But, like, The Bodyguard, y'all, The Bodyguard, like, think of all the songs. Y'all, Run to You, I'm Every Woman, you had I Will Always Love You, like, Y'all, come on now. Like, 
The pastor's wife is a good one too. Notice the common theme here that Whitney Houston is involved in most of these greatest soundtracks. Queen of the Night. Like, I mean, The Bodyguard, I still think, is one of the most iconic soundtracks. Literally. A Star is Born. I just like Shallow. Why can't we have talent again? Because why? It goes back to people not being honest in criticism. We were rewarding mediocrity. Prince of Egypt, like when you believe, you know, yeah. See, we didn't got so sidetracked because we were literally supposed to be talking about Grammys and then not being honest about reactions. And somehow we got stuck on, whose fault was this? Did, did I start this when I started talking about La La Land? Who's, who was responsible for this? Somebody asked me a question saying, what's a movie that I that I hate that everybody else loves? I didn't start this. Whoever asked me the question started it. I was just answering the question. Oh, Romeo Must Die did have some good songs. A dog needs a... Uh, what? What? What's that song? You give it back in one piece. What happened to movie soundtracks? They used to be so good. What happened to movie soundtracks? What I think of the last episode of This Is Us? I thought it was good. Everything did go downhill after La La Land. And then when John came, then we had to get business professional again. They stopped selling. Well, true. Yes. I haven't seen the reading, but everyone keeps saying, is, is it good? Is the reading good? My friend said, don't read anything. Don't watch anything. Just go and look at it. Okay, I'm going to watch it this weekend and I'll, I'll do a live about it. Yes, I'll be watching Creed 3 just for the plot. And the plot is Jonathan Major's abs, biceps, triceps. So, yeah. I haven't seen it. What movie did I like that people dislike? What's the movie you love most people hate on? Mine is Halle Berry's Catwoman. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I got to think on that. I got to think on that one. I don't know. I just have such a strong reaction to what I hate that everyone loves. I gotta think on that one. I'm gonna get back to y'all on that. That I a movie I love that people hate. I don't know. Let me let me see. Divisive movies. People, they got showgirls on here. Why do people hate showgirls so much? Huh. Well, most of these I kind of agree with. I'm looking at the most divisive movies. And I'm like, I didn't really care for these. So I'm okay with that. I didn't think 
think the last Jedi was as bad as people said. I think people were just being extra for no reason. Why do people hate Showgirl so much? I love Top Gun Maverick. I do think the first Top Gun is overrated, though. Did they do a screening for St. Omer in Atlanta? They did do John Boyega hella dirty during the entire Star Wars franchise. Have I ever wanted to write, produce, or direct? The only thing that I would want to, I would probably want to write but it will, I will want to do like more TV series. What? Okay. I ask people all the time. Tell me the plot of the first Top Gun. Tell me the plot of the first Top Gun. Can anyone tell me what is the actual plot of the first Top Gun? I don't see nobody typing. And that's my point. It's just a movie that exists to have people shirtless and to have people flying fighter jets. There's no real purpose of that movie. They just in school. They in flight school and they trying to be the best pilot and people end up dying and that's it. I'm just saying. The plot was about selling the military. But if anyone can, but no one can ever tell me what is the actual plot of the first Top Gun. Now, the second Top Gun got a plot, but the first one ain't got no plot. I'm just saying, it's definitely just a vibe. Like, it's definitely just vibes, okay? Literally. <laughs> Not the plot of a bunch of closeted gays play football. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying I ain't saying I hate the movie But I'm just saying It ain't no purpose to that movie Okay Just saying Am I gonna do a top 10? Nah I'm just saying It just exists, okay <laughs> I'm finna block Steve Steven Have I seen behind the movie? No I haven't seen it I really love Michael Keaton I like Michael Keaton Yeah Michael Keaton just does it for me I'm sorry That's my fave still No, I have a screening tomorrow, but I don't think I'm going to make it because I need to prepare for a panel that I have to moderate on Thursday. So I don't think I'm going to make it. So tomorrow, if I get through enough stuff, I can do a Last of Us episode four or five, whatever episode we're on, uh, reaction. We can do that. And then, yeah, episode four. And then on Friday, I'll actually do an episode five reaction. So, yeah. So, I need to finish watching Outer Banks. I need to get through two more episodes so I can... I need to get through three more episodes so I can peacefully go to sleep. Um, so, yeah. Yes, I'll do a live um, for both of them because it's just easier for me to do a live than to pre-record because I still don't know how to use my camera. Um do I like Michael Keaton Keaton better than no? Have I seen Ant Man three? Yes. I should play the game. I'm terrible at video games. Like the only thing I know how to play is Bust a Move, 
and Crash Bandicoot. So yeah. I will chat with y'all later. Yes, you guys are getting two more lives, but they're Last of Us focused. Um, I should start campaigning for some Little Mermaid interviews. I doubt I'm going to get them. I'm just being realistic. I don't think I'm going to get any Little Mermaid interviews. But hey, we can we can still hold out hope. Um, but yeah. You want me to ask uh, the OBX cast that? Nathan? You're right. Never say never. Crash Bandicoot do get hard after a while, but like the first and second one, I can still do. Michael. Elvis still mu stole music his whole career, but okay. Um, <laughs> you ain't ish, Steven. I watched my uh, dad, the bounty hunter. I actually interviewed the cast of my dad, the bounty hunter today. What is watch my day? Crash Bandicoot went hard back in the day. Do I want to interview Ariana? I don't really get Warner Brother junkets like that. If it ain't Netflix, y'all, I'm probably not getting it. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Y'all see who be giving me interviews. If y'all think about it, all of Elvis' songs are covers. Like the famous songs are covers. When I was watching the movie, I was like, damn, I thought, I thought that was his song. That's somebody else's song? If y'all see my interviews, y'all know who keeping your uh keeping your girl fed. I didn't like Elvis either. Yes, Jason, that's exactly what I'm saying. He was the original Jacquees. No, but I saw it trending. But Austin's great in Elvis. He's great. Oh, to get scream. Who is who? I don't know. You'll get you'll get interviews before me, probably. Okay. I gotta go to I gotta watch the show. I love y'all. Um I did see the Amy Winehouse and I was not a fan. Um, but but yeah, let me take this makeup off, get in my bed so I can watch this show before I go to sleep. Um, so I will chat with y'all tomorrow, probably at eight for The Last of Us. But let me go prep for my interviews. I love y'all and I hope you guys are having the most amazing night ever. Thank you so much. Mwah.